Hi there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 193. I'm Julie DiMatteo from thepaperpixie.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the U.S. and I'm coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. So as you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. I see Sue, Linda, Mulan, Kathleen, Crafting with Tracy, hello. Hi Bonnie, Rosina. Tammy, Tilly, Pam, yes, my husband Brian is over here. Am I pointing the right way? <laughs> I'm pointing to you, but he's watching for your questions. He'll pop those up on the screen for me. He's a big help. Um, hi, Mary, Chris, Amy, Wanda, hi, Ginny, Brad and Jackie, hello. Hi, Nancy. It's been a big week here in Paper Pixie World because <laughs> We have been super busy putting together product shares and in color club and last month's um, free gifts and thank you cards. So um, let's see, I got the thank you gifts and the cards or the free gifts and the cards out in the mail today. I'm hoping to get the product shares and in color club out in the mail. Oh, I think by Friday or Saturday, we're so close. Brian worked his buns off. <laughs> he cut all of the ribbon and helped me wrap the ribbon. We've got most of the paper packaged, a couple of quality things that I'm waiting on replacements from Stampin' Up, but we're really close. So we um, kicked butt over the weekend. So it's been busy, 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 but um, I love the process of it. And I'm excited to get the be these beautiful products into your homes, those of you that, that participate in my shares. I do product shares with the launch of every catalog. So I'll have another round of product shares coming out. Let's see, signups will be in June, I believe. That's going to be for the upcoming mini catalog. So if you are interested in getting on my mailing list, be the first to find out when I open the product shares again, just go to the paperpixie.com forward slash shares and there's a little um, email sign up and then you'll get added to my email list. Um, what else do I want to tell you? I've got, um, I have a little bit of show and tell for you and what am I missing? Brain is fried. <laughs> Isn't it always that way? All right, so let me tell you about this month's host code. For the month of April, my host code is GN4QUUTJ. You can always find that on my blog on the right-hand sidebar. Please use this for orders under $150. If your order is $150 or more, that's before shipping and taxes, don't use the host code because you'll earn stamping rewards. It's like being your own host. Um, the, a product share is actually sort of what it sounds like. You share with three other people an assortment of products. So for example, I take all of the new designer series papers. I take, um, is it August? I think you're right, Terry. Now I can't remember, August, September. I think you're right, so it'll be July. They just shifted the timing on us, so I apologize if I got that wrong. I think you're right though. So with product shares, I took all of the new designer series papers, some of the specialty papers. I essentially divide them by four. So it, it gives you an opportunity to get a sampling of all of the new products at a fraction of the price, as opposed to buying all of that uh, outright yourself. Same thing with the ribbon. I divide that into fourths as well. And I do all the work for you. So I put you in groups of four uh, to divvy up the um, paper and ribbon, but um, you don't have to do any of the work. I do it all for you and it, I ship it directly to your door and you can enjoy those papers. They come in six by six. I cut them down to six by six and then whatever. So for example, if a ribbon roll is 10 yards, I cut that into quarters. So you get two and a half yards of each. Um, it's fun, it's super fun. And I include all the coordinating colors, the product number and the price as well in case you fall in love with um, a paper or a ribbon and then you can buy the full pack. So hopefully that answered your question. Um, so I did my host code, um, my free gift for this month. Now the free gift are eligible at orders of $50 or more and I have choices. So the basic white medium envelopes, the Highland Heather Grow Grain ribbon, which is really pretty. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it or the Genial Gems. So if you place an order of $50 or more with me this month, 
you get to choose one of those. It's one free gift per month. Um, I think, what else? There are two great promotions going on right now. One is sort of a shop big promotion. If you purchase $250 or more, you will receive an extra $25 in Stampin' Rewards. Celebration will also start, I think it's August, Heidi. So it was supposed to be July and August. They've pushed it back a month to make sure that we have product due to some of the product delays. Um, so I believe it's August and September will be Celebration. Uh, let's see. So it's uh, oh, Connect, Craft, and Collect, I believe is the name of the host promotion. So orders of $250 or more. On top of what you'll already earn in Stampin' Rewards, you'll get an additional $25. So for example, if you, if you purchase $250 in product, you'll get $25 in Stampin' Rewards plus another $25 on top of that. So a total of $50. Also, there is a Join Plus promotion. It's a starter kit promotion. I love the starter kit. I've talked about it so many times, but it really is the best value for your money. If you're planning to purchase around $100 or so, the starter kit is a bit of a no-brainer, but you get to choose up to $155 in product of your choice for only $99. That's an additional $30 over what we you would normally get with the starter kit. And it comes with all the perks of being a demonstrator. It is the ultimate bundle it's a no obligation opportunity and it's a great way to test drive all the different demonstrator benefits and if you want to see my top 10 list visit the paperpixie.com forward slash top 10 and you can see all my favorite reasons for becoming a demonstrator or purchasing the starter kit i'd love to have you on my team of paper pixies we have lots of fun together i think that is it for the housekeeping. I'm gonna flip the camera. I'm gonna show you a quick show and tell with Lily. She's earning her pets badge this month with the brownies. And let's switch and do that. My mat is crooked. <laughs> Here we go. Um, they had to sign up to do a pet habitat and she signed up to do a hamster habitat. So we decided to look at things we had in the house and here is what we put together. This is one of my bins I got from the container store, but we did a little Dixie cup for the house. I think this is like a smoothie shaker ball. Yep. Um, she got a little plastic hamster, which made me jump the other day because of course I know that this is not a real hamster, but the habitat looks very similar to, I don't know, the hamster habitat we had when we had Zoomer Dickens and Rascal, the two hamsters we had when, we, when my brother Greg and I were kids. But anyways, we put a little, I think this is a fine tip glue bottle. Looks like a water bottle. And I believe that's leftover from either labels or ribbon. And we put a little bit of seeds in there for the hamster. And this is just a roll of tape for a little exercise wheel. So we got very, very creative. Um, so there's that. All right. I'm a little behind on today's card, so we're gonna do the um, we're gonna do a 3D project and a card. The card we're just gonna wing it. I have an idea in my head. I didn't finish it beforehand, but we are using my favorite product suite. And it's funny, as I worked on the paper shares uh, or the product shares this weekend, I have a new favorite. I'll probably do that maybe next week or the week after. But this is the You're a Peach suite. I love the price of this suite. It's $57 and 25 cents. Stampin' Up! Reduce the amount of things that are in a suite so it's not quite as overwhelming. There is the bundle, which is, and I, I literally just got this, um, what day of the week did I get it? Last Thursday, so I haven't even had time to put this on my magnet cards, but this is the Sweet as a Peach bundle. I love the mixed fonts in here and this all these watercolor images. What's really cool about this stamp set is this branch here. It not only works with the peaches, but it also works with the peach. I think those are peach blossoms. I don't know if that's accurate or not. <laughs> I should know because I live in Georgia, but I am an Ohioan born and raised. So <laughs> I don't really know. Do you know? No. I think they. I, my guess is that's... I don't know, somebody on the live will probably tell me. Um, but anyways, it's the Sweet as a Peach bundle comes in this suite, as well as the, I put it way over there. 
This is the Yora Peach 12 by 12 designer series paper. I'm not gonna flip through all these pages, but they're beautiful. You get 12 sheets of double-sided 12 by 12. I absolutely love it. And um, you also get in the suite, if you purchase the 155831, the mini jam jars. How cute are these? They're plastic. I originally thought they were glass, but they're plastic. And they are a really good size. I'm not sure of the ounces on these. Let's see. I don't think it says. These are food safe, so would be really cute with some peach jam. But what I actually imagine, I don't have any, but you guys know the, um, is it the Haribo um, peach rings? That's what I'm imagining would be really cute putting in this jar. So we're going to make a box to put this jar in because... You can make this jar really cute from the samples you see in the catalog, but why not put it in a really pretty box? We're gonna do that first. You get a set of six. Obviously one is in my sample and here's another one. They all come wrapped in plastic so they don't get scratched in this cute little box. So that's the mini jam jars. So you get those three things. The dies, oh gosh, Teresa, that is a good question. I cannot remember if the dies cut out the DSP. We will check. Um, Good question, because this wasn't part of the pre-order. Um, so anyways, it is the bundle. So the stamp and the dies, the designer series paper, and a set of six mini jam jars. So $57.25, great price for that. This is on page 60 of the new annual catalog, 60 and 61. You can see a close-up of the stamp set. Cute little ideas for the jam jars with the designer series paper as a lid wrapper. Really love how... There are three images on the stamp, and the die would cut those all out into three separate pieces. So this is a really cool stamp set, or bundle, I should say. The jar is almost exactly two and a half inches tall by two and a quarter inches wide. And I don't think it says the ounces on it, but I don't know if that matters to you all. <laughs> so um, let me, I'm gonna leave this open just in case I need to reference back. All right, so we're gonna start with, I dropped my peach dye, a piece of balmy blue, and this piece measures seven and a half by nine and a half. So you can get one of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. This project is gonna post to my website on Friday at thepaperpixie.com. I'm gonna post the card that we make tonight on tomorrow's blog post so that you can see all the supplies and all the good stuff to just sit back, relax, and enjoy. I'll have all the measurements and a picture of the template. All the good stuff will be on the blog post on Friday. All right, so balmy blue. And along the long side, which is the nine and a half inch side, we're gonna score this at two and a quarter. Four and a half, six and three quarters, and nine. I'm gonna turn it clockwise, and on the six or the seven and a half inch side, two and a quarter, four and three quarters, and seven. I know some of you are writing the measurements down, so we started with a seven and a half by nine and a half. We're scoring at two and a quarter, four and a half, six and three quarters, and nine. Rotating it clockwise, two and a quarter, four and three quarters, seven. Okay. Next, we're going to fold and burnish on all the score lines. There's that. Let me bring in the template. There's the template. Again, this will be on my blog post for reference. I'm going to put it in this orientation, so landscape with the half inch score section at the top. And starting on the bottom, I am just going to come in, I'm going to notch slightly right there. And then I'm going to cut up each of these vertical score lines all along the bottom stopping at that first horizontal score line. So this will remove that lower right rectangle. 
and then I'll just continue to cut up the score lines. I'm cutting right up the middle. All right, so we've released those panels along the bottom. Now I'm gonna turn it 180 and we're gonna focus on the top. Similar thing, but on the opposite side, I'm gonna come in and notch on that little half inch section. And then I'm gonna cut up each of the vertical score lines, this time stopping at the second horizontal. And obviously this box can be used for things other than these mini jam jars. I sized it for that. But, um, you know, you can throw in a handful of treats or probably some tea lights or a pretty candle. I'll tell you the measurements. It's the same as the um, jar. It's two and a quarter wide and deep by two and a half tall. Okay, so we've kind of released We've left this middle section alone. We're only got that little half inch section along that middle strip. And then we've released all of these. So I'm gonna bring back the paper trimmer. You can eyeball these as well, but I actually like doing this on the paper trimmer. All right, let me turn it sideways so you can reference this. Hopefully you can see that for the most part. We're gonna focus on the top. So we're gonna keep this section. I've got this where we've got the half inch score line on the right side. I'm gonna fold this section out of the way. So first section and third section. We're actually gonna remove the third section completely. But I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna line up this fold that we just did at one and one eighth. So just look at one and one eighth here up at the top. I think I'm off screen there. one and one eighth, and we're basically just removing the bulk from that top part. So we have something, pretend like this one's cut away. We'll do that in a second, something like this. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the bottom and it's gonna be the same sections mirrored for the top. So we wanna fold this one away and this one away. Let me turn it back this way, okay. This time, it's easiest for me to line up. I'm gonna fold this out of the way so I get a flat edge along there. The right edge we can line up at one and one eighth. Essentially what we're doing is these squares are two and a quarter, so we're cutting them in half or we're removing half of the bulk. So one and one eighth is half of two and a quarter. All right, let's get the paper trimmer out of the way. Now the last thing we're gonna do on the top section it's not the last thing, but <laughs> I'm gonna remove this whole piece because we don't need that. So just fold, I'm folding this tab out of the way, and then I can come in and cut. This is where the template really helps for reference, just to make sure you're removing the right sections. And then, if you've been following me for a while, you know that these are gonna end up being tabs, these short ones that we trimmed in half. So I've got to come in and notch those or miter cut those. I find it easiest to cut them if I fold the pieces out of the way that I don't wanna cut. So just get those out of the way and then you can sort of isolate the sections you need to miter cut. And I'll turn this around. We'll do the same thing on the top. The rule of thumb is basically anything you're folding into the box, you want it to be mitered. Mitered or corner rounded. If, if um, the top, I'll show you that in a minute. All right. Okay, so now this piece, this is gonna be the um, tab that tucks in. So we wanna round the corners. I'm laughing at myself because when I did the sample, I wasn't paying attention to which side of the detailed trio punch I was putting it in and I did the little floral image by accident. I was like, that's not what I meant to do. So let's go ahead and round the corners. <clears throat> like so. <clears throat> All right. Now, before we put this together, we are gonna do a little notch out there 
<clears throat> excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. Um, I saved the half inch circle punch, which has long been retired, but um, you can find those on Amazon if you're if you don't have one in your stash. But we'll use that to do a finger notch after I glue down the designer series paper. So let's see. All right, so I have five pieces of the peach designer series paper, four pieces that measure two and one eighth by two and three eighths. If you had a directional pattern, you want this to be in portrait. So these four are gonna go around the sides of the box, that middle section here. And then this piece is two and one eighth by two and one eighth, and that's gonna go here. Now, if this were directional, you would want the up down direction to go this way because this is gonna fold into the front of the box. So there's our little finger notch here. Did I even show you the box? <laughs> this is what we're making now that we're how many minutes into the show. Um, <laughs> it's just a normal, simple box for a treat jar. Now I don't have treats in here, but like I said, I think I'm sure you could find some peach candies or those peach rings, which are yummy. I love peach. Um, but that's the box we're making. Look how cute to a sweet friend. All right, so I'm just going to use liquid glue and glue down these panels. As Lily was doing research for hamsters, we learned a lot of things about hamsters that we didn't know. Apparently they eat meat, they're omnivores. I didn't know that. There's a lot I didn't know when I had hamsters when I was younger. They don't like to be bathed, but you can give them a sand bath, like chinchillas, which I thought was pretty cool. And I didn't know, but in the wild, hamsters can will typically run up to five, seven, seven miles in a night. Can you imagine those little guys? Surely that can't be for the dwarf hamsters that they walk seven miles. <laughs> Anyways. It wasn't enough to convince me to get a real hamster. Been there, done that. <laughs> I love this pattern, the floral pattern. Love those little blue flowers in there. We are surrounded by paper and ribbon. If only you could see behind the camera. <laughs> There's just enough space for Brian to sit and watch for your comments. <laughs> I carved a little corner out for him. All right, so that's what that's gonna look like. You got your four panels along the center. The one here, this is the square one. These four are the rectangle ones, two and one eighth by two and three eighths. Portrait, if you've got a directional pattern, this one is two and one eighths inch square. Now we can put this together. Oh, no, we can't. We gotta do our little finger notch. That is going in this section that we completely removed. So just gonna come in about a third of the way and punch that out. Okay, all right. Now flip this over. Got this as our lid on the right top. I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left put liquid glue on the side tab, then fold in the first score line from the right. I said that the right way, didn't I? Sometimes what I hear and what I say are two different things. All right, so we've got that. This is where our seam is. This is our back, okay? The back is the one with the tab. So we want to know that. So when we glue the bottom together, see we remove that bulk so those tabs are not overlapping. I'll put liquid glue on each of those tabs just to keep them in place. And then liquid glue on this front flap. I'm just doing a little bit of glue. It looks real messy, but no one will see it. So I'm folding the back flap, then the front. And then I can come in and just square up the bottom because we used liquid glue there. And then you can just take your jar 
which I of course put it away. We are not Lois. We um, had to make the decision. Was it in October? We had to decide if we were going or not. And in October, we were just, so we've got two little ones, a five-year-old and an eight-year-old. And we didn't know what the world was going to be like, what, six months, seven months in advance. And we just didn't want to put our, their grandparents, our parents at risk because they weren't coming on the trip with us. <laughs> it's our one time during the year that Brian and I can get away. So we just said, you know what, we can't make the call right now. So we decided um, to cash out instead. And I'm okay with it. I'm at peace with my decision. As if Lynn is watching, she asked me, she's like, I hope you're at peace. I'm at peace with it. I, as much as I, I had two chances to go to Maui and I had to say no to both, unfortunately, but we'll get there someday. That's on my bucket list. So, all right. So I just put the jar inside to kind of press the glue tabs down and then this can just close. Now, if you're having a hard time tucking your flap in, that one actually worked really easily. Sometimes you could have a little bit of excess, like if you didn't cut your score line totally straight, you can just shave off just a little bit from the edge there to get it to close. But this closes really well. And it's a pretty tight fit. This jar is almost, well, it's exactly two and a half inches tall. So you'll feel that it is just fills the height of that box, okay? But really sweet box. Again, you don't have to put the jar in here. This will fit all kinds of goodies and it's a pretty good size. Again, it's two and a quarter by two and a quarter by two and a half. So a little bit of a rectangular box there, okay? Now let's do a little bit of stamping here. I've got a scrap piece of basic white. We're gonna use um, Calypso Coral for the peach, but um, Pale Papaya works as well as Mango Melody. We've got Bumblebee, Calypso Coral, Mango Melody, Pale Papaya, and Petal Pink. Lots of different options. Now the paper is a watercolored pattern, so I think that's why we have all those choices of colors in there. I am laughing because Calypso Coral Ink Pad is brand new, because I don't know what happened to my other Calypso Coral Pad. I think it may have gotten thrown in the trash. So I've got a real juicy ink pad here. I'm actually gonna show you a trick because it's pretty juicy, I'm gonna get a really dark, here's an example of the peach, pretty dark peach, but there is some more shading to this. So, similar to last week when Tilly had the question about re-inking ink pads to make them juicy, sometimes they arrive juicy. So I just take something, this is the um, spatula from, I can't remember, I'm having a brain fart tonight. Um, the palette knives for our embossing paste. I just happen to have those in my stash, but you could use a expired credit card or gift card. Like don't use one that you would actually use. <laughs> That's why I say expired. Or a plastic spoon, something with a flat surface. And you can just press, I don't know if you can see how that's sort of changing the surface. So I'm basically pressing the ink into the foam pad so it's not quite all at the top. Now it's gonna start to rise again, but for this, let's see if this works. We're gonna just stamp, stamp, stamp. It does look to be still a little bit juicy, but a little bit more definition there. <laughs> Lily, let's do that again, because I think the other thing you can do is stamp off as well. As I use this ink pad, it's going to, um, it won't be quite as inky. There we go, I like that. I love that variation there to give you that watercolored look. All right, so there's that. And then we're gonna grab the leaves and I'm gonna ink this up. I'm moving this so that I don't <laughs> make a mess. Let's put this away and then pear pizzazz for the leaves this one is not as juicy so we'll get a really nice watercolored look there now I'm actually going to end up 
I should have just left this out. We're gonna while we've got these stamps out, I'm gonna do two more peaches and two more leaves. That's my idea for the card. Let's do that. While we've got the ink out. You could have some fun with this stamp too with some sponge daubers and, and different inks to give it some different color variation. We'll save. I'm gonna just die cut these all while we can. That got like an interesting stamp right there. I'm not sure what happened there, but that one looks good. All right, I'm gonna grab the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine. We're gonna cut out all our peaches and leaves. Actually, I like my plates are totally curved here because I don't. I'm bad about flipping them. <laughs> All right, so I've got little mini post-it notes. We're gonna use that to hold things into place. Let's trim this off so I don't have quite as much paper here. So I kind of line things up on the plate the very curved plate here. Take my post-it note and just hold that into place. How's it look? Different color? No, oh, that's good. Why don't you put the peaches above the leaves? I don't know why. <laughs> because I wasn't thinking straight. You mean to like conserve paper? Yes my logical husband here. <laughs> All right, so we got leaves and our peach. What I love about this is not only can the leaves go to the right as I drop them, they can also go to the left. So you get to choose whichever way you want to go. Cute. All right, let's do the other two while we've got this out, then we can put this mess away. That would have been logical. <laughs> Brian asked me why I didn't stamp the peaches above the leaves. And I'm like, I don't know why. <laughs> Oh, let's just, you know, trying to make myself do more work. That's why we can reuse our posty notes. And I'll show you a fun trick with cutting designer series paper for the card. I got that far. And Teresa, I haven't forgotten about your question about if the peaches cut out the paper. I've been, <laughs> I didn't even play with my new stuff yet because we got all that stuff for the product shares. So it's been killing me to have all this new stuff from the catalog and not being able to play with it yet. So I had to do the peach first. Now, where did I put my leaves? Total hot mess here. All right, just trying to get my post-it notes in place here. I do stagger the plates just slightly as that one falls out, just so that um, they feed into the die cutting machine easier. It catches it better.
All right, let's do that designer series paper and check that because I know me, I will forget. I'm pretty sure you can, Teresa, at least some of these. Oh, that's a little bit different, maybe not. Okay, so those don't fit. I should know this already. I don't believe they do now that I'm looking at this. What do you do for warped plates? What do I do for warped plates? Um, really, you just need to flip them occasionally in order to get them to go the other way. I don't recommend, you'll see some tips on the internet about putting them in the oven. I would not recommend that because you'll get off chemicals, off gases from that. Um, so I would just try to flip them one way over the other. The other thing you can do is store them in. Now, some of this is probably not recommended by the die cutting manufacturer, but sometimes I just store my plates in between the rollers. Um, but that's a good question. If there's some people that only cut on one of the plates and that's how they sort of keep their um, plates not from warping and they just like flip. But yeah, I recommend flipping them occasionally and that should get them to start to go the other way. I just forget to do that, so. <laughs> but I do not believe that these technically cut out the peaches, Teresa. They're close, but they're not exact, so. I think they're just complimentary. But good question. All right, so let's bring the box back and Oh, I'm gonna need the die cutting machine again. I forgot. We gotta do our little sweet little sentiment. We're gonna do to a sweet friend in early espresso. You don't really need much space at all for that. They've got this cool little die that fits with most of Actually, I think all of the smaller sentiments, which is really cute. So we're going to die cut that. This one's going to need a post-it note too, because my plates are curved. Is this in the product share? Um, yes, this paper is in the product share. So if you signed up for that, you're getting 12 six by six sheets of this paper. Yay. Probably should just get new plates and then start over flipping my plates. <laughs> I just could not stop myself from using the mini machine. So there is that sweet little sentiment with the angled ends. You obviously could do that with a pair of scissors too. But that d definitely keeps it very straight. All right, let's get to assembling this. I'm just gonna grab one of my peaches and I'm gonna take the liquid glue. This is how I built it for the box. I'm putting just a little dab on the bottom of that stem. And if you wanted to, grab your silicone mat just in case you were heavy handed with the glue. And then we'll put that right off to the right. You can't sterilize the plastic jars, but you know what, Cheryl, that's a good question. It says it's food safe, but <laughs> if you can't sterilize them, I see your point. So there are, there is jam in the jars in the catalog, but question I didn't actually think to that step well obviously I don't make jam but <laughs> Brian's laughing because I don't cook <laughs> um all right so we're gonna do dimensionals I'm gonna do a trio and then one more just to make sure that we connect the leaf to the peach let me show you that in the camera okay just in case that glue wants to let go, it shouldn't. And then we're gonna pop that up on the front. A Little bit of an angle there. Then I'm gonna grab mini glue dots, just a pair of them to put behind the sentiment. 
and I'm not going behind the right side because this is going to hang off the right side of the peach. So just mini glue dots there. You could use liquid glue as well. Glue dots are quick. Then I'm going to grab the crumb cake from the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack. How cool is this? Now, let me look in the catalog because I want to make sure that I can tell you two of these are not as much as the other three. I want to say that it's basic white. Just wanted to tell you about this Baker's Twine because... It's really cool that it comes. Okay. So it is crumb cake and white. You get 10 yards of each of those. Then you get black, gray granite, and very vanilla. And those are five yards each. So that is 35 yards total. Is that right? 10, 20, 25, 30, 35. 35 yards, right? <laughs> it's 10 and 10 and three fives. Yeah, 35. 35 yards of Baker's Twine. This is the Baker's Twine Essentials Pack on page 140 of the annual catalog. You may have missed it. We're going to be using the crumb cake one because I think this goes really well with the peach sweet. And I'm just going to tie a bunny ears bow. Get this down to the right size. Baker's Twine likes to twist its loop-de-loos -loop -loop on you a bit, so just mess around with it. It's because the twine's already twisted, so that's why it fights you sometimes. All right, let's see. Trim off the ends. Look at how cute that little bow is. So that's crumb cake. I'm going to grab a glue dot and do a little burrito roll with it so that we get it small enough to fit behind. I don't know if you can see that, but teeny tiny. Put it behind the knot. Place that right over the stem. Super cute. And then what do we add if we're the paper pixie? <laughs> I can't resist adding a rhinestone. I go through these like candy. So there is our Sweet as a Peach mini jam jar gift box to a sweet friend. Really, really cute. Quick and easy to make. And let's do the card. Let's see if we can pull this together. Let's do a coordinating card. And I'm going to start with... A balmy blue card base. This is four and a quarter by 11. I've scored it in the middle at five and a half. This is a valley right now where I scored. I'm going to turn the valley into a mountain and then I'm going to come in and burnish with my bone folder. Okay, so that's the card base. I've got a piece of basic white that measures four inches by five and a quarter. This is going to go on the inside. I don't typically stamp the inside of my cards, but you absolutely can. All right, so that's the inside done. I've got a piece of Calypso Coral. This is three and three quarters by five. Got a piece of basic white that is three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. So those are gonna layer like so. You get that little sixteenth of an inch of the Calypso Coral peeking through. I have glue getting jammed in there. I'm gonna show you a trick with the Designer series paper. I'm going to be winging it at some point because I never finished the card. <laughs> All right, so we got that. We're going to go ahead and layer this down. I'm trusting that I'm going to be able to get the sentiment straight. <laughs> Normally, I would not 
glue all this down until after I've stamped the sentiment because that's why paper is two-sided, right? So you can stamp on both sides. I think I wouldn't be surprised, Paula, because that is a pretty trendy thing with slim lines. I, I wouldn't I think that Stampin' Up! will probably come up with something. That's my guess. I don't know when, but um, that would be really awesome if they did. <clears throat> All right, so I've got a piece that I cut. I was originally going to do this side, but I actually liked this side. <laughs> so let me show you how I did this. If I can find the piece. Okay, so this piece of designer series paper, I cut to the same size as the basic white. So three and five eighths by four and seven eighths. And what I did, let's do it on the green side, I'll show you. Just took a ruler. And if you don't have this sweet, adorable six inch metal ruler, I love it. It's on my favorites page at thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. I'm gonna make a little pencil mark on the long side at one inch from the left and then one inch from, so one inch from the bottom left and one inch from the top right. So I've got two pencil marks, one there and one there. Bring in the paper trimmer and in the cutting track, I'm gonna line up the pencil marks. Yes, so Tan, the, um, the jars are available in the catalog. So page 60 of the catalog, the Sweet as a Peach Sweet, you get the bundle, which is the stamp and the dies, the paper, and the six mini jam jars. It's through Stampin' Up. All right, so I'm cutting. I've lined up those two pencil marks in the cutting track, cut, and then I've got these diagonal pieces for two cards, two from one. All right, so I actually want to do it this way, I think. Yes, so you could do either way. If you like the green side, you could do it here. You could do it up here. Any orientation, not that way, obviously, because not cut that way, but because this paper is not directional, you can use it in so many different ways. So I'm gonna grab liquid glue. I'll show you another cool thing you can do. I'm just lining that up. It's the same size as that basic white layer. The liquid glue lets me slide things into place. And if you have, happen to have any raised edges from the paper trimmer, just come in and burnish it with your bone folder. So the other thing you can do here for a really cool layout, I probably would do the white over the green, but you could do that little zigzag pattern and then a sentiment right here. That would Watch, I'm gonna change that up, aren't I? <laughs> Let's see how this looks. So that on the bottom, this on the top. Oh yeah, what do you think? Yep, Brian's nodding his head. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> so you can take the one piece and cut it in the diagonal like that and you can use both pieces. That way, you get the benefit of both sides of our awesome designer series paper. So we'll do the green on the bottom, because that's sort of the more neutral one. We'll do the flowers on the top. So you honestly could do this with any of our papers. You just would need to pay attention to if any of them were directional and which pattern, which direction you need the pattern to go. Sliding that into place. Now let's hope one of our sentiments fits in the... <laughs> I'm just There's a little bit of a raised edge on that, so I'm just burnishing that down. Ooh, cute. All right. Remember, we've got our pair of peaches. We're going to add those last. I'm looking for my stamp set. So I do want to show you our stamp sets are changing, the photopolymer, the cases are, the stamps themselves are not, but I just wanted to show you if you haven't seen it before. Now there's a full cover and they've printed the images on the sleeve that goes in the case. So you will see that there's no images printed on the acetate and these can stick 
right to your stamp case. How cool is that? It's actually making me rethink my stamp storage because I normally have them in pockets and I actually love what they've done here. I'm secretly hoping that Stampin' Up! does the same for our red rubber because that would be really cool. Um, even though we've got the stickers, but let's see, let's do sweet as a peach or I already did. I already pulled sweet as a peach. Which one is this one? Have a peachy day. We'll do sweet as a peach because I think that will fit. Yes. Okay. Let me grab a clear block since we're done with the green. pick that up. Let's do early espresso. Oh, hold your breath. Let's get this straight. Because this will be the one that I put on my blog. Oh, close enough. Do you see the little dot right there? <laughs> oh. All right, so there's the sentiment, sweet as a peach. And then we've got our pair of peaches. All right, I'm eyeballing here to see what we're gonna do. Oh, so cute. All right, I think that's the way we're gonna go. <laughs> You're being invited into my creative mind right now. Again, we're gonna assemble these in the same way we did for the box. Stampin' Up! was really thoughtful in how they designed the stamps in this catalog. There's lots of really cool tricks that the stamps can do. For example, in the, I think it's the Wild Things bundle, there's a cat that's sitting down and a cat that's laying down, I think, and you can change them to be either a leopard or a tiger. Both faces fit. The stripes can be either upside down or the other way, depending on whether the cat is sitting or standing or laying down I think sitting or laying down it's really cool though all right so dimensionals do the same amount probably overkill but I love me some dimensionals and this card will get mailed so the dimensionals help get all the backings off here We'll just pretend like that little goof is not there. All right. Do this guy here. Oh, stop it, too cute. All right, what else do we need? Maybe we'll do one more. We'll do a bow on one. <laughs> you may see something different when it shows up on my, um, blog post tomorrow. You never know. You know what, Kathy, I haven't ordered that yet, but yes, it's going on my order, probably my next order. Um, cause I've, it's grown on me when I first saw the catalog, I wasn't so sure. Um, but I love it. My high school mascot was a tiger too. So I feel like I need to get it. Um, this year was supposed to be our 25th is that right? Yeah, 25th high school reunion. And because of COVID, we couldn't have it. But I may need to keep that one in my stash for the tiger. All right, let's do... Looking for my glue dots. Again, little burrito roll. <laughs> There's no better way to describe what I'm doing with the glue dot there. Just a little bit of texture with that twine, and then I'm gonna grab. Where'd I put my rhinestones? Oh, here, found them. Let's do a big rhinestone. Just do that, like here. Clean up my mess so you can see the projects. We're gonna do Prize Patrol momentarily. So there we have our Sweet as a Peach card, and to a sweet friend, the mini jam jar gift box. Yay. All right. So the card's going to post to my blog at thepaperpixie.com tomorrow. 
This will post to my blog on Friday with a shortened YouTube tutorial, a picture of the template and all the supplies. So there's that and prize patrol. Let me go grab. Until I didn't grab a new prize patrol yet. All right, so winners. Well, I've got a quick update for, let me go back to this and then Wow, the mess tonight. All right, prize patrol. We have last week's winner, Deb Fear DeLillo. Oops, as I just did, hold on, switching back. Um, she hasn't claimed her prize patrol yet. So Deb, if you're watching, go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol, and I'll get these in the mail to you. And for last week's winners, congratulations to Diane Nelson and Sandra Pruitt. So to claim your prize patrol, go to thepaperpixie.com slash prize patrol. You'll also get a handmade card from my stash and I can get those in the mail to you. All right, so let me go grab something for fun from my prize patrol stash. I forgot to do that. I'm gonna give away two of the Whiskey Business stamp set. I love this stamp set. And to enter to win, you just want to put in hashtag prize patrol in the comments of Facebook and in the comments of the video on YouTube, not in the live chat. So if you're watching on YouTube, don't put this in the live chat, put it in the comments of the video. I just can't pull the hashtag from the live chat. So this is available to live watchers and replay watchers. I'll be choosing um, winners next Wednesday. So hashtag prize patrol. Make sure you spell it correctly, all one word, add the hashtag, and you will be entered for a chance to win. Whiskey business. All right? <laughs> Brian's laughing. He's a bourbon guy. Um, <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I know all the hashtag prize patrols are rolling on in. Um, thanks again. I will be live next Wednesday for episode 194, inching closer to 200. Um, next week, I think I'm, well, it depends if I can get it in in time. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but I have a new sweet favorite. I'm thinking next week we'll do the trick. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful and blessed week. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I'd love to have you come visit me at thepaperpixie.com. Again, this, the card will post tomorrow. The box will post on Friday. And I appreciate you you for being I appreciate you for being here. I hope you had a wonderful Mother's Day and I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Take good care. Bye.